I love this word, hook. I will hook you up with the right people. I will hook you up. You don't have to worry about trying to make your own way or anything. I will hook you up, the Lord says. Under the cloud, the Lord allows us certain things that happen. Under the cloud of blessing of the Lord's leading, there's connections. There's divine connections. There's obstacles also. But it's under the cloud. And so if we're under the cloud, those obstacles that come our way, we can glide over because we are in his will, so to speak. We're in the will of the Father and we're not stepping outside of the cloud because we run into other things that God has not designed for us. And one person wrote a book years ago that spoke of self-inflicted problems. We will have self-inflicted problems. God will take you through it, but you'll have to go through the consequences of it. So he is telling Israel, and Moses will aware of this, I'm not moving if you don't go before me because I want to be on the umbrella of your support. I want to be under the umbrella of your protection. And anything that takes place, if I'm under the cloud, you got me. You got me. It spoke of grace to reinforce, to fortify, to give physical strength, courage, or endurance, to add mental or a, a moral strength to, to encourage, uh, to bear up. There's no struggle. He said in the move because I got your back. I'm backing you with wisdom. I'm backing you and I know the direction and I'm leading you because you have never went this way before. We have never faced the, the different obstacles and the different things that are happening today. So it is very important for us to stay under the umbrella, under the cloud of the Lord. It is the glory cloud. And when he stops, we stop. Now, many times when the Lord stops and we go through a season of uh, like a winter season where it looked like everything is withering away. And uh, I speak of that in Hope Lives Here um, every Tuesday and Thursday about our winter season and how we want to do our own thing. We don't realize that God has allowed that to be as we're under his cloud. Listen to me today. As we're under his cloud, he has allowed that to be where you go through a dry period. Yes, a dry period. Israel went through a dry period. And when he stopped, the cloud stopped, they had to be there, but there was rest there. There were, um, I want you to remember that in the move of God, uh, you, you yourself are not struggling because you're leaning. You are supported uh, by the Holy Spirit of God because of his leading. Remember, these were shadows these were shadows of what was to come. Shadows, what do we mean by shadows? Well, if we look at a shadow, it's an imperfect and faint representation. Uh, it's an imitation of something. We have biblical types and shadows. We call them typology or symbolic symbolism, pictures of something that has not yet arrived. Uh, the original item or picture is called the type and what is picturing is called the anti-type or that you know that 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 shadow so for example to make it plainer about shadows uh the cloud see the cloud moving was god himself it wasn't that the lord was here and he sent a cloud no he sent himself that's why moses knew that he was the cloud. And that's why he says, if you don't go, I'm not going because he was remembering when he was at the uh, burning bush, God was the burning bush. The Lord wasn't over here and the bush was burning. God showed himself as the burning bush. So as we look at Exodus, the 17th chapter in the sixth verse, here, here we have a good example. It says, I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. And he told Moses, he said, strike the rock. 
and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel and drank the same spiritual drink for they drank, 1 Corinthians 10, 4 says, for they drank from the spiritual rock. And it tells us that accompanied them and that rock was Christ. So we realize that the rock is Christ, but it was a shadow of what was going to come in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this, this cloud that is, is flowing, it's not something that the Lord designed to send their way and he wasn't in it. He was the cloud. Again, he was the pillar of fire. And, and today, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, as we, we don't have a cloud, a physical cloud that we, that we uh, uh, are under, but we're under and covered inward and outward with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he leads us along the journey there was going to be some connections. There's going to be some divine connections that await us in under this cloud. If we stay in yeah, under this cloud, don't try to step out from under the covering of the cloud to do your own thing. Sometimes we feel that God is not moving quick enough. And um, we even come to the place of saying, well, he doesn't hear me. And uh, heaven is like brass and and uh, I'm moving under the cloud, but I'm not. I'm not seeing. So I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna just step out from under the covering, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna do my own thing in Jesus' name. <laughs> no, Jesus is right here under the cloud. So if you're gonna step out, you can't tap uh, His name to something that you're doing outside of His perfect will, which is the umbrella of the cloud. Okay, he has the connections for you. He has divine connections that are right under that cloud. There's obstacles, as I said before, under the cloud. There are different things that you will encounter under the cloud, but as long as you stay, saints of God, under the cloud, hallelujah, there is nothing that can hinder you. There's nothing that can stop you. There's nothing that can delay you. So here we see, uh, he gives wisdom, wisdom to, to do business. Uh, many of you want to be business people. You want to be entrepreneurs. He got you. He got you. Just stay under the cloud and just calm down. Don't be so hasty. Don't be so quick to move. Let him lead. Uh, distributors, there's distributing uh, of the funds of the kingdom of God that is going to go for God is going to put in your hand when he can trust you and he can, he, can, he can rely on you knowing that you're going to be good stewards over that which he gives you. But don't just again, I cannot state it enough. Sometimes we get a little bit too hasty and we do not even realize that we're moving in our own strength. And up the road, there's disaster. There's disaster. And so let's let's be wise as this cloud you know, is going. There is rest. You can rest from your own labor. Okay. And through all of us, uh, this you will, he said, through the midst of all of this you are going to have rest because it's not your doing, but it is the Lord's. So you can rest, you can have support, you can stretch out and relax. Just keep your eyes on the Lord. Stay on the path and then the cloud will stop for you to rest physically. The reason why I continue to tell you to worship the Lord, to lift your hands and to praise God, to open up your mouth audibly and begin to praise the Lord. When you find yourself, and I want you to listen to this, when you find yourself that you cannot lift your hands, I'm not talking about if you have sickness or something and you can't, but you can look up to him. You can lift up your spirit. When you can't open up your mouth, you say, Apostle, you always go back to praise. Yes, I do. Because when you can't praise God, when you can't open up, then your flesh is saying, no, I don't want to submit to God. So I want, I, I, I can do this myself. I don't need to submit to him. So you just sit and you just look. You don't want to give yourself over to him. That's a dangerous place to be in. 
Because if you don't submit to him, you're going to submit to something else. You're going to be submissive to something. And you're going to find yourself on your own. And you're going to do things that are look silly. You're going to say things that look silly. You're going to find yourself, why? Because you're acting in flesh and you do not know it. And that's why Moses said, no, I'm not doing this. I was under Pharaoh's uh, control. I was under a world system where I did things and I slew an Egyptian. I did things in my own flesh, not knowing that I was going to have to go end up on the backside of a desert. And there I was going to have to hear from God where God got a hold of my spirit, sent me right back right back into under that world system. But now I have the Holy Spirit. I have the cloud of blessing. I have the direction of God. Now I have a word for you. And as he dealt with Pharaoh, his assignment was to lead them out. But he had to go right back to get victory over what he failed at. So church, God will let you get some rest from time to time, and, and I, I wanna stress this, and I'm talking about just physical, natural rest. Uh, this is something I have to submit to uh, that was always difficult for me. I've been guilty of not getting sufficient rest because you get caught up in the work of the Lord. You get caught up in uh, doing, you might get caught up in your job. You get caught up. There's a demand that comes to you. And before you know it, you're not getting rest and you're, you're, you're opening yourself up for sicknesses and diseases and everything else that can come to you. You cannot hear. You think you're hearing. But because you don't have physical rest, let's remember Jesus stole away. He got away from the crowd. He got away from the disciples. And he went upon the mount in Jerusalem, the highest peak. And there he was with his father, resting, resting. And as he rested, he got orders. As he rested, he could hear from his father even better. So those that work very close to the ministry must realize you need to get away for rest sometimes. You just have to do it because we, we if we don't, we're working and I have been guilty of this, working in your own strength, said, I cannot leave because I have to, because I have to, be, I have to do this. I know I have to be crucified into a capital C. It has to bend, that big capital I, have to bend over until it forms the letter C, which is Christ. He has to work through us. And he is one that will give us rest because he knows that this physical body cannot take it all. This physical, especially with all that is around us, all the uh, spirits that's loosed in, in the world today, all the crime, all the hate, all the sicknesses, all the diseases, all the indifference, and the, all that is out there, we have to walk through it every day of our life. And spirits do not have certain places they are. They can come anywhere, in a home, everywhere. You have to recognize that. And you have to be restful in order to fight the good fight. Physically, you have to be able to fight. Okay, so you have to be healthy in your body to be able to fight. So God knew the children of Israel needed rest. So he came in the pillar of fire at night. And there they stopped, they stopped. And that pillar of fire was the camp. All the children of Israel, they had, there was three that faced the north, three that of uh, the tribe that faced the south, three that faced the east and three that uh, faced the west. We talked about Judah, Zebulon and, uh, and uh, Issachar, they faced the east. They were the first to go and they headed east, but they had to have uh, that pillar of fire. What took place at that pillar of fire as they rested, it kept them from wandering out of their lane into somebody else's lane. It kept them from not wandering into another tribe, okay? But they knew where they were supposed to be. And the fire lit the camp that kept order in the camp. God is a God of order. 
And so all the time they're resting, God is moving. God is showing them a light. He's showing them order. He is teaching them. And then because they have order, when the cloud moved, they were ready to move. Um, looking at Proverbs 3, and I want to read this from the Message Bible. It said, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. And I can't stress that enough. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do and everywhere you go. And get counsel, saints of God, please, in big decisions. It's not about control. It's not about some people are everywhere. You're over here listening. You're over here listening. You're over here listening. And you become so divided that you are no good where you should be. It's okay to receive from others, but when you find yourself just, I mean, just awkward and just, just off, you check yourself, okay? So bounce something off. I think um, Pastor Sherelle talked a lot about this in the finances. Don't think you know everything, okay? You don't know everything. I don't know everything. I'm 81 years old. I know a lot of things, but I don't know everything. So I have to get counsel. I talk to different apostles over different things. I talk to the ministry and present things to them. So let's remember that we do not, we do not want to be alone in this, but we want to uh, lean upon the Lord. Okay, and so listen to God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. He is the one. Let me find this. I just lost my place here. Okay, come on here. He's the one that will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God run from evil. That's the message. So there is more wisdom in relying on God and not on yourself than you might first realize. Charles Spurgeon says this, and I quote it, self-sufficiency is Satan's net where he catches men like poor silly fish and destroy them. Let me read this again from this classic um, uh, writer here, self-sufficiency, I'm talking about self-sufficiency, is Satan's net where he catches men like poor silly fish and destroy them. Hebrews 4.10 says, for he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. So we want to, and that's why I said we labor. We labor to enter into his rest. It's laboring. And I know we're speaking of the rest when we leave this world and all, but there's rest here as we stay under the cloud of Christ. Only when we cease from our self-effort is the Lord able to fully work on our behalf. And here I'm just about to close, but 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9 says, but we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure above strength, so that we, de we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Hallelujah. In themselves, they had the sentence of death, but they served a resurrected God who was able to bring them forth and to bring them out as they relied and depended upon him. The great thing is the cloud is now in you. The cloud is in you because the cloud is the Lord. He is indwelling in the person of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. We don't have to look afar off 
but we know within us as we have accepted the Holy Spirit and been filled with the Holy Spirit. John 14 said, and I'm going to pray the Father, Jesus was talking, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. Listen to this, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Praise the Lord. So we are led by the Holy Spirit, which you could say is the cloud, the glory of God that is within us. Stay under the cloud, okay? We are moving, we're moving out, we're moving out. Zion is moving out because the cloud is moving. We're coming into a new thing that we are coming out of where we are. Things are changing. Things are changing. And uh, you're going to see so much uh, uh, from the, the spirit of Zebulon. You're going to see so much from the spirit of Issachar. You're going to see so many connections that will take place for you. Oh, yes, you can get outside of that cloud and you can you see you can have connections and all but i'm here to tell you that it will not be anointed by the fires of the holy ghost so stay under the lord and let the connections take take you right there where he will uh, uh, where the holy spirit will take you right through and you'll move forever with him under a cloud of blessings father i thank you lord this morning and I, I know it's been brief, but Father, I want them to get a hold. I want your church to get a hold to an understanding of the cloud of the Lord. I want them to understand, Father, the rest of God. I pray, Lord, that we will examine ourselves and we will realize that we do need rest physically, physical rest, emotional, Father, that you can move and that you can speak to us, Lord God, in that rest, Father, because you're not in a hurry for anything. You hold time. You hold time. And we are governed by it, but you are not. Hallelujah. You can move it backward it forward it, whatever, because time is nothing to you. And so, Father, while we are captured in a, a, a time, you open us up and cause us to come into the realm, hallelujah, of a timeless hallelujah hour where we can receive from you and we can walk in the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost as we lean upon you, as we trust you, as we're supported by you, Father, I speak that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ today, and I give you glory, and I give you praise. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.